Hey there. Now let's take a look at the next video and see what happens to I when we flip into compound interest. The bank rate, sorry, um, in these questions, the way I write them up in the textbook does, it's always given per year, per annum. Sometimes I've even seen it like on, um, on the internet. Um, they'll put, you know, 16% P Wait, that's per annum, all right? So, and for simple interest, it's always per annum, always per year. But the trick is, with the compound interest, as you're gaining interest in all these like little time periods, you don't get the full amount. So if I have, say, 12% per year, and I'm compounding twice a year, I get 6% the first time, and 6% the next time. So that interest has to be adjusted for the time periods. Okay, so it's not just a simple divide by 100, put it in the formula and la di da. So, you have to remember that that's huge. And it is just like before. I can't really imagine any example where it's going to be a number bigger than one. It's going to be zero decimal something. All right, so let's look at this. 12% per year compounded quarterly. So the first, here, oh sorry, here's our formula. It's percent divided by 100, just like before, but we now have to divide by the compounding periods per year. So we have compounded quarterly, and we have 12% divided by 100, always divide by four. So 12 divided by 100, divided by four, 0 0.03. That makes sense, right? You have 12% for the full year. We have to divide it up into four chunks because it's only calculated quarterly that's gonna be 3% per year. All right, now, not often do we end up with crazy ones, but here's one, 5% for your compounded daily. So five divided by 100, divided by three, 65, gives you this crazy number, which I rounded to that. It's not something we're gonna do most of the time. I'll tell you a secret. Most of the time, I make our interest rates work in the question so that they don't give us these great big long answers and we don't have to round right. But once in a while you do. And then you just carry them all on your calculator um, or you just write them down on, and then you just retype them. It's a little bit of a pain, but for the most part, I try and make them so that they're a little easier to deal with. Okay, 7.5 per year compounded monthly. So. 7.5 divided by 100. So this part, like before, you're just converting it into a decimal. Now, monthly, divide by 12, times per year. So 7.5 divided by 100, divide by 12. Uh-oh. 0.03. Zero six. I said, uh oh, because I forgot this calculator. Um, apparently, I probably need to work with it, has flipped it over into scientific notation for me. And it has 6.25 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, so quick little lesson on scientific notation. One, you can just do whatever calculations you need with with it in this form. So don't freak out. But what it means is this negative three means I move my decimal place one, two, three, and there's a zero out front. That's where those two zeros magically appear from. Uh, for the most part, if your calculator is doing that, you should be able to reset it. Sorry. And uh, if you can't, come talk to me and we can find the manual and reset it so it doesn't go to scientific notation. For the most part, they do. Um, I don't remember where I got this calculator. It's a cheapo. So I guess when I'm done the video, I'll see if I can figure out how to fix that. It's not wrong. It's just, you know, if you're not expecting, that's very weird. But if you do need to do that, 
it's really important that you have the times 10 in there and the minus three. Okay, anyway, 15% per year compounded annually. 15 divided by 100 divided by hmm, annually is 1, 0, 0.15. So, like I said, technically we could have done that every single time we did simple interest, but you guys would have been frustrated and annoyed with me. This is a lot of work. Okay, let's take a look at what this works, looks like. Now, this is a Joanne tip for you. I write these the same every single time. And there's a reason I write it exactly the way I do, because it helps me not to screw up. And I always do N first. And then I do I. So this is review of the both of them. All right, so I got 16% compounded quarterly for 10 years. So N, I said I don't need that, but I'm gonna put it there anyway, is equal to 10 years times quarterly, or is 40. Move that up a little bit. There is a reason I write the word years. It's not just me being some, I don't know, putting down way too much information. Because then what I do when I go to do I is equal to, okay, 16% divided by 100, divided by four. So my point is, maybe it's just the size of my writing too, is when I do it this way, this part, always lines up for me. So I put the word years in there. That's when I write, it's the same size as that. And it always reminds me to make that adjustment because it's so easy to forget. Or the other thing that people will do is they'll take this number and put it in there. No, 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 no. If you write it this way and it lines up, it's this one you multiply by four, this one you divide by four. Guaranteed, write it that way, life will be better for you. Or at least in that class. All right, so 16 divided by 100 divided by 4. 0 0.04. Hey, here's a tip for you. If you're bored with this, 16 divided by 400 gives you exactly the same answer. So you can always take this and put those together, multiply them together in your head, or whatever this is, put 100 behind it. Never mind, that's making life complicated. 16 divided by 100 divided by 4. How about y'all just turn off the video for a minute and do these last three and then come back and check. All right, n is equal to, let's see, I got three years times semi-annually is twice a year, six time periods. So I is equal to five divided by 100 divided by, yeah, semi-annually too, see? Maybe it's just because my writing is just the right size, but for me, that really works. Um, equals 0 0.025. I don't put units on this one because it's time periods. This would be, I guess, just the number. It's like a decimal. All right. Borrowed for 2.5 compounded weekly at 1.3%. So N is 2.5, whoopsies, 2.5 years times, mm, let's see, 52. 2.5 times 52. It's 130, and my interest is equal to 1.3 divided by 100 divided by 52. Oh, there went my calculator again. 0 0.0002. All right, compounded monthly for 6% for eight years. So N is equal to eight years times monthly 12 
Mm, nine, yeah, 96? I don't know. Eight, nine, 12. Don't tell the grade 10s that I don't know my multiplication table for 12 all the time. Because we're practicing that. Shh. Our little secret. All right. I, <clears throat> excuse me. 6% divided by 100 divided by 12. Because it's monthly again. So 6 divided by 100 divided by 12. You can do that all at once. 0 0.00. .00. But, and there we go. That is how you adjust. So you got to make sure you remember how to adjust for both of those when you're doing the compound interest. You don't have to touch it when you're doing, sorry, the simple interest simply, be, simply because you'd be multiplying and dividing by one. So what's the point? It's the same, but it's just a waste of time. All right.